Okay, so we are continuing with 14.11. <clears throat> Sarva dware shude hesmin prakasha upajayate gnanam yadatada vidyad vritham sattva mityuta. The manifestation of the mode of goodness can be experienced <clears throat> when all the gates of the body are illuminated by knowledge. All the gates. So there are nine gates eyes, ears, nostrils, mouth, genitals, and anus. When every gate is illuminated by symptoms of goodness, it should be understood that one has developed the mode of goodness. Now, what does this mean, symptoms of goodness? <clears throat> Meaning, all the senses actually engage in activities of goodness because the ears, eyes can engage in activities of passion and ignorance. Uh, but when one is illuminated by symptoms of goodness, every gate uh, also displays these symptoms. <clears throat> Uh, for example, one who has transcended goodness, one who is in Shuddha Sattva, he uses his eyes to see the beautiful Lord, uh, form of the Lord, ears to hear, glorification of the Lord. So the same senses can be engaged in uh, looking at something else, hearing something else, based on the mode in which the um, person is in. Right. So one who is in mode of goodness, all his nine gates will be engaged in activities of mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness, one can see things in the right position. One can hear things in the right position. One can taste things in the right position. One becomes cleansed inside and outside. In every gate, there's development of symptoms of happiness. And that is a position of goodness. Um, so, for example, say somebody wants to do... Um, uh, is a Brahmana, right? So, is a mode of goodness. The Brahmana... Uh, you know, he only sees uh, right things. He doesn't see wrong things. He only hear, uh, hears right things. He doesn't hear wrong things. Uh, so like this, uh, each of his senses is engaged in the activity of goodness. And so there is a symptom of happiness. Mm, he's happy that he's only hearing the right things. He's happy that he's seeing the right things. So in that sense, the uh, senses are also happy in that in the actions that they are doing. So this is goodness. Loba pravritti rarambha karmanam ashama praha rajasyeta anita yante vivridhe bharatarshaba. When there is an increase in mode of passion, symptoms of great attachment, putive activity, intense endeavor, and uncontrollable desire and hankering develop. So this is very important because this is most of the people in the current situation. So what happens when there's an increase in mode of passion? Great attachment. So people become so much attached to things. Fruitive activity. So they want to achieve things materially. Intense endeavor for achieving that. An uncontrollable desire. Uncontrollable desire. I want it. I just want it. Uh, I can't live without it. Hankering means too much attachment, too much desire. So this is the, these are the symptoms of people in mode of passion. Too much attachment, uh, working intensely for achieving something materially, uncontrollable desire, anchoring. One in the mode of passion never satisfied with the position he has already acquired. He anchors to increase his position. If he wants to construct a residential house, he tries to he tries his best to have a palatial house, as he would be able to reside in that house eternally. As if. So, yeah, nobody is saying, okay, if you want to have a house, I have a house, but don't have to spend your whole life's earnings in that. You can just have a normal house where, you know, one can stay. Uh, right? So, this is important, right? And it develops a great hankering for sense gratification. People just cannot control themselves. Every moment they want sense gratification. <clears throat> there's no end to sense gratification. He always wants to remain with his family and in his house <laughs> and to continue the process of sense gratification. And many times devotees also do this. And they want to spend, oh, bro, I don't have time at all, whole week I'm busy. Weekend I want to spend time with my family. Uh, yeah, please spend uh, time with your spiritual family, not material family. Get your uh, so-called material family also and associate with devotees. That is the spiritual family. But people want to spend time with family, relatives, 
this is useless. There's no cessation of this. All these symptoms should be understood as characteristic of mode of passion. Okay, so that is why majority of the people in this material world at this point of time are in mode of passion. All these symptoms are pretty evident. Prakasho pravrittishya pramado moha evacha tamasyetani jayante vivridhe kuru nandana. When there is increase in mode of ignorance, darkness, inertia, madness, illusion are manifested. Darkness, no clear clarity. Inertia, don't want to do anything. Madness and illusion. Illusion means thinking of the body. When there is no illumination, knowledge is absent. One in the mode of ignorance does not work by a regulative principle. He wants to act whimsically for no purpose. So there is no real intention. Why you are doing something, I just want to do it. This is ignorance. Even though he has the capacity to work, he makes no endeavor. This is another problem. People can do, but they are so lazy, they don't want to do anything. This is called illusion. All the consciousness going on, life is inactive. Consciousness is there, but life is inactive, useless. So one who doesn't want to do anything, oh no, I'm going to sit at home, oh, I'm going to watch TV, all this is more of ignorance. And if one has the capacity, everybody has capacity to do some work. It's not like somebody has no capacity at all. Every day, everybody has capacity to do some work, but he makes no endeavor to do that. Uh, or he's lazy. Oh, you know, I'm so tired. Let me take some rest. Laziness. Actually, body doesn't require rest, but his mind is saying that, no, no, take some rest. No, it's good. You've been working all week. The only work really which is important for us in the whole week is work that we do for Krishna. All other work is anyway predestined. It will happen. And the result anyway is also predestined. Destined, so we'll get whatever we're supposed to get. Uh, the only thing of any use for us really in the whole week is what we do for Krishna. And then we should not bring ignorance into that. That is why irrespective of all these modes, whether we are in goodness, passion, ignorance, doesn't matter. Somehow push ourselves to engage in service of Krishna. And then we know it's, it's very good if you are in the association of devotees who pull you. Because that's when we can actually make, otherwise we are stuck. We are badly stuck in these modes. Uh, if, uh, if a Maruti van is not starting, somebody has to come and push from behind. So that is why association devotee is important. Devotees will pull us, push us, whatever, so that we can move forward, so that we don't get stuck. Now, so when you keep asking people, saying that how many rounds you are chanting, people keep wondering why this person is behind me. And because otherwise we'll get stuck. And we don't want anybody to get stuck. Mm -hmm. So keep pushing, keep pushing, pulling. Prabhupada said ISKCON is a movement. So we have to move. We cannot remain stagnant. So we have to keep moving. Otherwise, these qualities are, these gunas are so difficult. They are like, they are ropes. Guna also means rope. They'll just bind us and we'll be happy. That is our, what we call um, comfort zone. You know, our mode is our comfort zone. We have to move above our mode, beyond our mode. Yada satve pravruddhetu pralayam, pralayam yati deha brud, tadot. Tamavidam loka namalan pratipadyate. When one dies in the mode of goodness, he attains the higher planets of the great sages. One in goodness attains higher planetary systems like Brahma Loka, Jana Loka, and these, and, and there enjoys godly happiness. The word amalan is significant. It means free from the modes of passion and ignorance. There are impurities in the material world, but the mode of goodness is the purest form of existence. There are different kinds of planets for different kinds of living entities. Those who die in the mode of goodness are elevated to the planets where great sages and great devotees live. Okay. Rajasi pralayam gatva karma sanghi shujayate tatha pralinas tamasi muda yoni shujayate. And one dies in the mode of passion, he takes birth among those engaged in fruitive activities. And one dies in the mode of ignorance, he takes birth in the animal kingdom. Some people have the impression that when the soul reaches the platform of human life, it never goes down again. This is incorrect. According to this verse, if one develops mode of ignorance, 
After his death, he is degraded to an animal form. From there, one has to again elevate himself by the evolutionary process. So it's a gradual process. There, there is no shortcut to come again to the human form. Therefore, those who are actually serious about human life should take to the mode of goodness and good association, transcend the modes and become situated in Krishna consciousness. So this is what we have to do. We, we have to be serious about human life. We should take to the mode of goodness. That means that we should come from Tamoguna to Rajoguna, Rajoguna to Sattvaguna. And then how do we transcend? In good association. Good association, we should transcend that mode of goodness also and become situated in Shuddha Sattva, Krishna consciousness. This is the aim of human life. Otherwise, there is no guarantee that the human being will attain, again attain to the human status. Karmana Sukrata Syahu Satvikam Nirmalam Phalam Rajasastu Phalam Dukkam Magnanam Tamasapphalam Result of pious action is pure, said to be in the mode of goodness. Action done in mode of passion results in misery. Action performed in the mode of ignorance results in foolishness. That means one who is stuck in the mode of ignorance, he'll just keep going down, 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 down. And one who is doing goodness, uh, it is pure, so it keeps going up, up, up. Action done in mode of passion results in misery, so he has to be in this material world, boomy mostly, to suffer. The result of higher pious activities in the mode of goodness is pure. Therefore, the sages who are free from illusion are situated in happiness. But activities in the mode of passion are simply miserable. Any activity for material happiness is bound to be defeated. If for, in, for example, one wants to have a skyscraper, so much human misery has to be undergone before a big skyscraper can be built. <coughs> the financer has to take much trouble to earn a mass of wealth. Those who are slaving to construct the building have to render physical toil. Miseries are there. Thus, Bhagavad Gita says that in any activity performed under the spell of mode of passion, there is definitely great misery. There may be little so-called mental happiness. I have this house or this money, but this is not actual happiness. The mental happiness is not actual happiness. Actual happiness is only on the spiritual platform. This is all illusion. Mental happiness is an illusion. Because it's to the body and that body is anyway dead. As far as the mode of ignorance is concerned, the performer is without knowledge and therefore all his activities result in present misery and afterwards he will go on toward human life. Animal life is always, toward animal life. Animal life is always miserable. Although under the spell of the illusory energy, Maya, the animals do not understand this. The animals can't understand. Slaughtering poor animals is also due to the mode of ignorance. The animal killers do not know that in the future the animal will have a body suitable to kill them. Mam Saha, this is what it means. Agreement between the killer and the animal saying that next life you can kill me. That is the law of nature. In human society, if one kills a man, he has to be hanged. That is the law of the state. Because of ignorance, people do not perceive that there is a complete state controlled by the Supreme Lord. Every living creature is a son of the Supreme Lord. And he does not tolerate even an ant being killed. So there is karma pala for this also. Whether knowingly or unknowingly we kill, we get karma pala. One has to pay for it. So indulgence in animal killing for the taste of the tongue is grossest kind of ignorance. Human being has no need to kill animals because God has supplied so many nice things. If one indulges in meat eating anyway, it is to be understood that he is acting in ignorance and is making his future very dark. Of all kinds of animal killing, killing of cows is most vicious because the cow gives us all kinds of pleasure by supplying milk. Cow slaughter is an act of grossest type of ignorance. In the Vedic literature, the words Gobi Prinita Matsaram indicate that one who, being fully satisfied by milk, his desire of killing the cow is in the grossest ignorance. There is also a prayer in Vedic literature that states, My Lord, you are the well-wisher of the cows and the brahmanas. You are the well-wisher of the entire human society and world. Purport is that special mention is given in that prayer for the protection of cows and the brahmanas. Brahmanas are the symbol of spiritual education and cows are the symbol of most valuable food. These two living creatures, brahmanas and cows, must be given all protection. That is a real advancement of civilization. In modern human society, spiritual knowledge is neglected. Cow killing is encouraged. 
is to be understood then that the human society is advancing in the wrong direction and is clearing the path to its own condemnation a civilization which guides the citizens to become animals in their next lives is certainly not a human civilization the present human civilization is of course grossly misled by the modes of fashion and ignorance it is a very dangerous age and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process krishna consciousness to save humanity from the greatest danger so propad uh, purport is more talking about ignorance so this whole slaughtering animal slaughtering um the whole thing is in the grossest mode of ignorance and cow slaughter is the worst and talking about how brahmanas then cows have to be protected otherwise we're not really making advancement we're going down 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 and also this actions done in the mode of fashion results in misery uh, we people experience this they experience even in their current life also right like people are working so hard they don't have time to even eat food it results in you know acidity and some other health problems or blood pressure and this and that and all that i mean it's just self inflicted misery for nothing for nothing we are not getting anything by acting in the mode of fashion and it results in misery sometimes in current life and sometimes in future life and so it's very important that we have to somehow slowly gradually come to the mode of goodness so we have to propat says we have to uh, um, arrange our life activity such that we don't encourage passion and ignorance satva sanjayate gnanam rajaso lobha eva cha pramada moho tamaso bhavato gnanam eva cha so this is very very indicative it says how what how can we detect what mode a person is in mode of goodness real knowledge develops so one if he has real knowledge that means that he is in mode of goodness mode of passion greed develops so if you are hankering for this that this that then mode of passion and if there is foolishness madness illusion is mode of ignorance so we have to see are we in real knowledge are we having lust greed are we foolish mad and ill in illusion then we know what mode we are in and it doesn't matter see for people who are practicing bhakti whatever mode we are in it's just incidental as in we are there because of our past life etc but we are fortunate that we have come in touch with krishna consciousness and we have to just seriously practice krishna consciousness in the association of devotees then automatically you know all these modes influence of these modes will go we don't have to worry we don't have to worry too much about it uh, we have to simply act in krishna consciousness that's all since the present civilization is not very congenial to the living entity <laughs> when civilization is not very congenial is not very favorable krishna consciousness is recommended through krishna consciousness society will develop the mode of goodness uh so this is the process see when the mode of goodness is developed people see things as they are if you are not able to sing, see things as they are that means we are not able to distinguish body and soul and good and bad and all this that means that we have still to develop mode of goodness mode of ignorance people are just like animals and cannot see things clearly mode of ignorance for example they do not see that by killing one animal they are taking the chance of being killed by the same animal in the next life because people have no education in actual knowledge they become irresponsible so irresponsibility means ignorance to stop this irresponsibility education for developing the mode of goodness of the people in general must be there so we have to educate people to develop mode of goodness which is krishna consciousness when they are actually educated in the mode of goodness they will become sober and full of knowledge of things as they are sober sober means not affected by happiness and distress and they'll be in full knowledge of things then we people will be happy and prosperous irrespective of whether there is misery around us or not we can be happy even if the majority people aren't happy and how prosperous if a certain percentage of population develops krishna consciousness and become situated in the mode of goodness then there's a possibility for peace and prosperity all over the world 
So that was the whole intention. Prabhupada actually uh, wanted to create Brahmanas in ISKCON uh, because first is they have to guide the whole society. And then for the general populace, uh, chanting, hearing, um, and honoring Krishna Prasadam. That's all. They don't have to become big philosophers. They just have to follow, surrender to uh, bona fide authority and follow. And if people just do this, they'll come to the mode of goodness and then transcend goodness. So there are leaders who are brahmanas and then there are followers who can be whatever, but they're all Krishna conscious and uh, then the whole, there'll be peace and possibility all over the world. Otherwise, if the world is devoted to modes of passion and ignorance, there can be no peace or prosperity. In the mode of passion, people become greedy and their hankering for sense enjoyment has no limit. One can see that even if one has enough money and adequate arrangements for sense gratification, there is neither happiness nor peace of mind. Also, even if there is enough money, people don't want to give it to Krishna. People don't want to give it to Krishna. People don't want to depend on Krishna. People don't want to surrender to Krishna. And in their material life, they are, they are no peace of mind. They are worried. Oh, so much money. Can somebody take it away. How will I protect it? So there cannot be happiness or peace of mind. That is not possible because one is situated in the mode of passion. So if we are in the mode of passion, we cannot be happy. And we should understand this. So we have to come down to mode of, I mean, sorry, elevate ourselves to mode of goodness. If one wants happiness at all, money will not help him. He has to elevate himself to the mode of goodness by practicing Krishna consciousness. So before we can even transcend the modes, we have to come to mode of goodness, bare minimum. When one is engaged in the mode of passion, not only is he mentally unhappy, but his profession and occupation are also very troublesome. See, we experience this, all of us. He has to devise so many plans and schemes to acquire enough money to maintain his status quo. This is all miserable. In the mode of ignorance, people become mad. Being distressed by their circumstances, they take shelter of intoxication, thus they sink further into ignorance. They become mad. They're very distressed by their circumstances. Their future is very dark. So please read this, what, what, these verses again and again. Okay, This is very, 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 very important to understand where we stand. Hmm? So I'll stop here because I have to go somewhere. So if anybody has any questions, you can kindly ask. But please read this purports huh? again and again. Please read this purports because, I mean, every time I read this, I keep getting some new revelations, new understanding. So please read. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah. Prabhuji, uh, this Kshatriya, you said he is in the mode of passion. Yeah. But Arjuna was a Kshatriya, but he had the quality of goodness, Prabhuji. I didn't get this. Yeah, devotees are always in mode of goodness. So devotees will do their duty irrespective of what ashrama they are born in. Mm -hmm. They will just do their duty because Krishna wants them to do. Krishna says, Mahajana Yanagatasya Panta. So if somebody is born in a Kshatriya family, he will do his Kshatriya duty. But his, his heart will always be treated a transcended goodness. So... But, uh, but Prabhuji, our work is according to the uh, quality what we have got. Uh, Correct. Uh, that I was confused, Prabhuji. That's no, no. See, be, uh, quality we have got meaning... The pure devotees are... Don't, we should never look at these qualities and all with respect to pure devotees. Pure devotees come and play certain roles because Krishna wants them to play. Okay. Right. So we should not apply this while they might act on that platform. Like for example, if uh, Kshatriya has to fight, if Arjuna has to fight, he might show passion and you know, anger and all that. But that's just because he has to play that role. So we should, but we should not confuse this with uh, their actual qualities. Their actual qualities are they've already transcended, but they're just playing certain roles. Okay. These qualities, Varnashrama and all is applicable only to us. Conditioned souls, okay. not for liberated souls. Is that okay? Okay, Prabhuji. Thank yeah. you, Prabhuji. Okay. Good, nice yeah, thinking. It's important that we should all think, think so many questions, so many questions, so many things which are unclear. We keep clarifying. Okay, anything else?
Okay, thank you very much.